this is actual flag deployment and ALSAP offload. Apollo 17, EVA number one, extravehicular activity. Let's take a look at it for a second. You don't have to worry about listening to what they're saying. Yeah, of course it weighs when you do that. Point out that you can't... <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, what I want you to note here is, they just planted the flag. Where is the sun in this picture? It's very easy to tell. It's to the right of the astronauts and above the astronauts, but not very high. Very long shadows. And if you go back and look at the moon phases, for Apollo 17, in reality, it should be so low in the sky that they're barely even seeing light this day. And I think the day they landed was actually in total darkness. In any case, the sun is very low in the sky. You have the flag with the blue on the left and the rest of the flag standing out to the right. And here you have the astronauts. And he's going up to dance around and take pictures. And supposedly when he gets over to this side, he's actually going to capture a picture of the Earth in the sky and we're going to find something very, very wrong there. Let's continue. I think that is my object flag. It's a beautiful picture. You see that? Okay, you're... Uh, now notice, he's taking the picture. Okay, now he's shifting over. He's going to come back and hold the flag, I believe, or he does it later, I can't remember. All right, there he goes. He's touching it. He's going to take a famous picture, and supposedly the Earth you're going to see is in the background with this picture. Now he's going to hop around a little bit more, take another picture. He's still basically on the same side. Famous pictures coming, guys, and they're busted on them. Long, 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 long shadows behind the astronaut slightly up in the sky. All right, he's done his little picture making thing there. Now let's, uh, I'm going to zoom for, zoom like every 10 seconds so you can see that they're, they're, they're done. There you go. We're going to have one more picture and actually if this picture is what they're going to say is the one, this, this totally burns them. But I'm going to give them credit for the other one. The, the, you're going to see later. Here the sun is behind the astronaut. Behind and to the right. Elongated shadows to the left. Now what we're going to see is, oh now here we go, these pictures here, if he took any, are totally non-relevant. Totally non-relevant to what we're going to show here in a minute. I also want you to notice as they go to the right, of where the flag is, of course this is going to hang on me, everywhere in the background there's nothing but big hills all the way around the edge. And I think that's on, see all these hills? They keep getting higher and higher and higher. See this? Everywhere I see there's these big hills, but when you see pictures there's no big hills. It's okay. This is reference, you can come back and rewind and look at this. The sun is up and to the right up here. Up and to the right. More to the right than up. Very low on the horizon. To the right. All right. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to show more of the horizon. Notice there's no earth in the sky anywhere. You never see the earth in the sky. Only in still pictures, guys, that I know of. Now, now the flag's in shadow. I don't know how that happened, but now the flag is in shadow. They're in the sun. And look, the sun's in front of me. Look, look at all the shadow on the sun now, on the flag. Still the same square. This thing was drenched in sunlight before. Unbelievable. If you can't, I mean, when you really start looking at the stuff to try to find errors, it's really all over the place. It really is. It's not hard to find all kind of little things. Look at this thing here. Look at this. You think that would do that in no atmosphere? 
course it would. I believe in the lunar landings. That's exactly how it would act. Oh well, let's get to the point of this video. All right, I posed this question and I got one response that was exactly what I thought it would be. Um, my, I postulate that it is impossibility, an impossibility with the moon under your feet to have the earth in an orientation of top to bottom instead of a left right. When you look at the model of how it's supposed to work, and I put that model in the video with the moon going around the earth, there's no way she, you should have a top bottom orientation if the moon is under your feet. Well, guess what the person suggested? He called me an idiot and said, just do this. There we go. That was his solution. Well, okay, that's your solution. You know, this is the only way this is possible. Okay, let's say the spacecraft was flying around equatorially around the middle of the moon and it caught the Earth here and that's how it did. Now, never in the history that I know of of NASA have they done that. They always show their supposed flight paths around the moon. And then they come back around and do their thing. So, according to him, this is the way it's possible. And this makes it right. Okay, then how do you explain this? Now, before I get to what I really want to show you, let's take a look at this, all right? Here is a picture. It's this, These are all Apollo 17 guys. Look how long, elongated the shadows are. The sun is very low in the sky. It's still slightly, I don't know why we're seeing this shadow come this way. I don't understand that. Let me, let me show you what I mean there. Here we go. This is what makes sense to me. We got the, a sun low in the sky on the right for this thing pointing at the earth. <laughs> We've got it going straight at the astronaut from the guy taking the picture. And we know that's true because there's absolutely no shadow at all on the astronaut. Let's see if I can zoom that in a little bit. Do we have any shadows we can see on him? A little bit under his arm here. Okay. Actually, this looks studio lit to me. You should have more shadows than that, especially this side. But maybe it is. Maybe it's straight here. Okay. In any case, it's low in the sky. Look how long these shadows are. This guy's six feet tall. The flag looks like it's maybe seven, seven and a half. Shadow goes long behind the guy. Okay. We have a low in the sky shadow. So um, we have a sun somewhere in this area here, I guess, or over here. In any case, it's low in the sky and in front. Remember the square here to the left. All right, the square is on the left side. So let's take a look at the problem. Now, if the earth was in the sky, this is something what we should see, right? Maybe less, who knows? Let's just give it, you know what? Whatever the moon phase is, the earth is the opposite phase. Uh, Apollo 17, let me put that on here. Okay, the X pretty much represents where they were. Now, if you want to relate this to Earth, let's say that would be maybe the UK, as far as how far it is up from the middle. Maybe not that far up. Maybe it's Spain. Uh, I don't know. Maybe up to as far as north as Switzerland. But that's where Apollo 17 was, guys. You can look it up. So, this would be the same as us being in, let's say, somewhere in the vicinity of the Mediterranean Sea, looking up at the sky at the moon. All right. Now, let me show you what the moon's phase was when they were there. When they landed, this was the approximate phase. Actually, I believe it was like this. But let's give a little credit and say we're there. But in any case, they got the shadows right. They should have been long and elongated to the right. All right, got that? Now, here's the deal. Since less than half the moon was visible, when you understand the model that they came up with, more than half of the Earth should be visible. So if when the, when the moon is full, like this, okay, the, the Earth would be in its new phase. You wouldn't see it at all. Make sense? Because the sun is in direct line between the two. So, anyway, we should be seeing something about like this, just like you would see in uh, the UK, right? You would see, let's give it on their third day, it was about a half moon. 
Although this was taken on the first day, guys. Okay. Well, I don't know if this particular one was, but the flag planning was that we looked at. All right. So, anyway, this is what we should expect. And what's under their feet? They're standing on the side of the ball, just like they tell us we're standing on the side of a ball on the earth, right? We look up at the moon. It's up in the sky. What do we see? Do we see this, the, the moon, I mean the earth, anything but a left or right orientation? Do we see it like this, you know, turned up like that? We don't expect to look out and see the moon like that. We'd be like, what the heck is going on? All right, everybody with eyes to see, we'll see the problem here. See the earth, it's almost in its top bottom orientation. You can see that the sun is barely here on the corner of the astronaut. You can actually see it here on this one. Okay, so uh, it's coming back from this slightly left direction. We know it's low in the sky, but yet we have the Earth here, which would require this. I'm going to show you on each one where the sun would have to be located. Now we're going to look at uh, two different halves. We've got the left half and the right half. Let's start with the right half. The issue here isn't so bad, and by the way, when you see some of these other pictures from a distance, they are pretty well corrected to what it should be, but the close-ups are always messed up. And by the way, as far as I can tell, I've looked at footage, a lot of footage of Apollo 17. For some reason, they just never catch the Earth live in the camera. Now, maybe somebody can come up with footage and prove that wrong to me. Let me know. Uh, anyway, in case you didn't know it, let me show you something here. This is the famous one on the left, okay, where the Earth is in the sky. This is one of the two famous ones, actually. And when you turn the contrast up, you see a box around the Earth like this, because it was pasted in later. Very obvious. But uh, this is just another way to show that this is fake. Back to the right. The sun has to be above and to the left for the Earth to be in this position. It's not a complete left-right orientation, which I do not understand how you can have that with the moon under your feet because it should be the exact opposite of what you see on the earth and you don't see that do you or do you in fact I've actually exaggerated this a little bit there's a slight downward angle to the Sun not as extreme as what it would be here but the point is I can't do the 3d rendering correctly here the Sun should be if you're looking if the astronaut's eye is looking out this direction he would be looking at the Sun in front of him in front of him. So how do we have this in the sky? This is the real killer here though. You have to have the sun directly overhead to have that on the earth. Correct? Tell me if I'm wrong. How could you have the top half of the earth lit like that and not have the sun directly above it? But the astronaut in the very same picture he has no downward casting of his shadow other than very slightly. It's almost perfectly parallel. You can look at all the shadows in the flag. In fact, some of the shadows look like they actually might go up a little bit. I don't know if that was extra stage lighting that caused that. I don't know. But in any case, you cannot have what we see here. It makes no sense. The moon is obviously under the astronaut's feet. They're standing on the moon, aren't they? And yet here's the Earth in a top-down orientation. And guys, when they're up there, the Earth changed a whole lot between these two pictures, didn't it? And remember, when they're on the moon, it's not like what we see here on the Earth. They see the same thing because they're in synchronous orbit, supposedly. They see the same thing for seven days at a time, at least. Very, very slow changes. We see a rapid change rising and setting. Why? because we rotate once in 24 hours to the sun. The moon rotates at 10 miles an hour, guys. 10 miles per hour. It takes days to see the change. And here we have in a matter of just a couple photographs, look how much change in the earth there was. Again, there's the boxes and everything. Just one of just critical thinking stuff. And I'm stupid for not realizing that. Well, you just got burned by Apollo 17 pictures. People will go in denial. I don't think they will ever come around, guys. But just extra fodder for you to be able to show people. Real quickly, guys, 
you can go and actually look at this, the scale of this ladder. I can't remember what the exact figures were, but I know it was about two feet shorter than what they thought it was going to be because they were expecting, supposedly, that these pads here were going to sink that far into the lunar dust. They should have known that from all those different earlier probes they sent up there that scraped the ground. It wasn't going to sink down that much. So, that you know, the whole thing's just a joke. In any case, I think they said this was 8 feet and it should have been 10. And when you see the guy going down the ladder, you see the scale of it. And when you see the guy at the top, you realize this thing isn't that big at all. And everything from this point, this line here above, takes off from the moon, all right? And <laughs> it's supposed to have all the following equipment in it. And I want to take a look at that before I end this. You have oxygen tanks. You have three astronauts that got to fit into that lunar module. So you got three times that in there. And when they landed on the moon, they threw that out. Now, I know what somebody's going to say. Only two astronauts had to go into the limb. So what you're saying is irrelevant. Really. Remember Apollo 13? They never made it to the moon. So they couldn't chunk out anything. And supposedly, all three of them had to come into the lunar module to be saved. Go back and look at that story. So you have three astronauts, three full-grown astronauts. And when you see them on the film inside, they're not wearing these suits. They're wearing something else. So they got three guys with a different set of clothing on. They have these suits and their helmets all packed into the lunar module. They've got this thing packed into the lunar module. Look how big this guy is. Look how huge this thing. These freaking wheels are three feet high. Three, six, nine, twelve feet of wheels. There's two cameras here, not to mention the cameras the other guy was walking around with. All kind of stuff I'm leaving out. And these are the famous, supposedly, carbon dioxide canisters. Some are round and some are square, and they had to make shift on the Apollo 13 supposed disaster. That was a big ratings thing to get people interested in it. Because at Apollo 12, the second landing, people called and wanted to interrupt the program. These people believe this was going on now. Man walking on the moon for the second time ever, and they called the networks when they were showing this, saying, "We want to see I Love Lucy." <laughs> I Love Lucy is being interrupted. We want to see that now. So anyway, you're supposed to have all this equipment and much more that they had up there supposedly in that one lunar module. module. Can somebody please answer me a question, first of all? When the astronauts are going to go to space, to go into quarantine, so they can't get no germs or catch no colds, you see them walking towards the rocket, and they're shaking hands with people. They've just came out of quarantine, so they couldn't get in contact with nobody else, and yet they're walking out and shaking hands. And as for Neil Armstrong, when he come down, he was on the move, one small step, and come on jointly for this big morale, what have you, then took a picture of a perfect footprint. It was perfect. To me, it looks like it's been moulded and stuck on top of the so-called moon. The footprint is embedded. It looks like a mould. Did he have one leg? There's only one footprint. Wake up, go, 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 go.